Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 1. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the assembly, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Mitzrayim, saying, Take ye the sum of all the assembly of the children of Yasharel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Yasharel, you and Aharon shall number them by their armies, and with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you, of the tribe of Reuven, Elitzer, the son of Shediur, of Shimon, Shalumiel, the son of Suri Yishadai, of Yehuda, Nakshon, the son of Aminadav, of Yisakar, Nethaniel, the son of Suar, of Zebulun, Eliyav, the son of Shalom, of the children of Yosef, of Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amihud, of Menasha, Gamliel, the son of Perasdur, of Binyamin, Abidan, the son of Gideoni, of Dan, Aki Yezer, the son of Amiyashadai, of Asher, Pagiel, the son of Okran, of Gad, Eliasaf, the son of Deuel, of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Inan. These were the renowned of the assembly, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Yashrael. And Moshe and Aharon took these men which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the assembly together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upwards by their poles. As Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. And the children of Reuven, Yashrael's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuven, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Shimon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Shimon, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Of the children of Gad, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Gad, were forty and five thousand six hundred and fifty. Of the children of Yahudah, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Yahudah, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. Of the children of Yisachar, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Yisachar, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Zebulun, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Zebulun, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Yosef, namely, of the children of Ephraim, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Ephraim, were forty thousand and five hundred. 
of the children of Manasseh by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Manasseh, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Of the children of Benjamin, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Benjamin, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Dun, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Dun, were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. Of the children of Asher, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Asher, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Naphtali, through their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Naphtali, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. These are those that were numbered, which Moshe and Aharon numbered, and the princes of Yashrael, being twelve men, each one was for the house of his fathers. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Yashrael by the house of their fathers, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Yashrael. Even all they that were numbered were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Leviim, after the tribe of their fathers, were not numbered among them. For Yahuwah had spoken unto Moshe, saying, Only you shall not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Yasharel. But you shall appoint the Leviim over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp around about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle sets forth, the Leviim shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Leviim shall set it up. And the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Yasharel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard, throughout their hosts. But the Leviim shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the assembly of the children of Yasharel. And the Leviim shall guard the watch of the tabernacle of testimony. And the children of Yashrael did according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did they. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 2 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, and unto El Aharon, saying, Every man of the children of Yashrael shall pitch by his own standard, with the ensign of their father's house far off about the tabernacle of the assembly shall they pitch. And on the east side, towards the rising of the sun, shall they of the standard of the camp of Yehuda pitch throughout their armies. And Nakshon, the son of Aminadab, shall be captain of the children of Yehuda. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next to him shall be the tribe of Yisachar. And Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Yisachar. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliav, the son of Chelon, shall be the captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Yehuda were a hundred thousand and fourscore thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuven, according to their armies, and the captain of the children of Reuven, 
shall be Elitzer, the son of Shedeur. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Shimon, and the captain of the children of Shimon shall be Shalumiel, the son of Suri Shaddai. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, and the captain of the sons of Gad, shall be Eliasaph, the son of Reuel. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuven were a hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies. And they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of the assembly shall set forward with the camp of the Leviim in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward, every man in his place by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies. And the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama, the son of Amihud. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty thousand and five hundred. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamliel, the son of Pedastur. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Then the tribe of Binyamin, and the captain of the sons of Binyamin shall be Abidon, the son of Gideoni. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were a hundred thousand and eight thousand and a hundred throughout their armies. And they shall go forward in the third rank. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies. And the captain of the children of Dan shall be Achiezer, the son of Amiashadai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher, and the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pagiel, the son of Okron. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali, and the captain of the children of Naphtali, shall be Ahira, the son of Enon. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were a hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. These are those which were numbered of the children of Yashrael by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their host were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Leviim were not numbered among the children of Yashrael, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And the children of Yashrael did according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward, everyone after their families, according to the house of their fathers. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 3 These also are the generations of Aharon and Moshe in the day that Yahuwah spoke with Moshe in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aharon, Nadav, the firstborn, and Avihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aharon, the priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadav and Avihu died before Yahuwah, when they offered strange fire before Yahuwah, in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aharon their father. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and present them before Aharon the priest, that they may minister unto him. And they shall guard his watch, and the watch of the whole assembly before the tabernacle of the assembly, to do the service of the tabernacle. And they shall guard all the instruments of the tabernacle of the assembly, and the charge of the children of Yasharel, to do the service of the tabernacle. And you shall give the Leviim unto Aharon and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Yasharel. And you shall appoint 
Aharon and his sons, and they shall guard their priest's office, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Leviim from among the children of Yasharel, instead of all the firstborn that opens the womb among the children of Yasharel. Therefore the Leviim shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Yasharel, both man and beast, mine shall they be. I am Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi after the house of their fathers, by their families, Every male from a month old and upward shall you number them. And Moshe numbered them according to the word of Yahuwah as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their families, Livni, and Shemai. And the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram, and Yitzhar, Chevron, and Uziel, and the sons of Merari by their families, Machli and Mushi, these are the families of the Leviim according to the house of their fathers. Of Gershon was the family of the Livniim, and the family of the Shimiim, these are the families of the Gershonim. Those that were numbered of them according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were seven thousand and five hundred. The families of the Gershonim shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward. And the chief of the house of the father of the Gershanim shall be Eliasaph, the son of Lael. And the charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the assembly shall be the tabernacle, and the tent, the covering thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and the hangings of the court, and the curtain for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and the cords of it for all the service thereof. And of Kohath was the family of the Amramim, and the family of the Yitzharim, and the family of the Chevronim, and the family of the Uzielim. These are the families of the Kohathim. In the number of all the males from a month old and upward were 8,600 guarding the watch of the sanctuary. The families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward, and the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohathim shall be Elitzaphan, the son of Uziel. And their charge shall be the ark, and the table, and the menorah, seven-branched candlestick, and the altars, and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister, and the hanging and all the service thereof. And Eliezer, the son of Aharon the priest, shall be chief over the chief of the Leviim, and have the oversight of them, that guard the watch of the sanctuary. Of Morari was the family of the Machlim, and the family of the Mushim. These are the families of Morari, and those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were six thousand and two hundred. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Morari shall be Syria, the son of Avihail. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward, and under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle, and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serves thereto, and the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords. But those that encamp before the tabernacle towards the east, even before the tabernacle of the assembly, eastward, shall be Moshe, and Aharon, and his sons, guarding the watch of the sanctuary, for the watch of the children of Yasharel, and the stranger that comes nigh, shall be put to death. And all that were numbered of the Leviim, which Moshe and Aharon numbered at the commandment of Yahuwah, throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward were twenty and two thousand. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Yashorel, from a month old and upward, 
and take the number of their names, and you shall take the Leviim for me, I am Yahuwah, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Yasharel, and the cattle of the Leviim, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Yasharel. And Moshe numbered, as Yahuwah commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Yashrael, and all the firstborn males by the number of names, from a month old and upward, of those that were numbered of them, were twenty and two thousand, two hundred and threescore and thirteen. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take the Leviim, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Yashrael, and the cattle of the Leviim, instead of their cattle, and the Leviim shall be mine. I am Yahuwah. And for those that are to be redeemed of the two hundred and threescore and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Yasharel, which are more than the Leviim, you shall even take five shekels apiece by the pole. After the shekel of the sanctuary shall you take them, and you shall give the money wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aharon and to his sons. And Moshe took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Leviim. Of the firstborn of the children of Yashrael took he the money, a thousand, three hundred, and threescore and five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moshe gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aharon and to his sons, according to the word of Yahuwah, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 4. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and unto El Aharon, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after their families, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even until fifty years old, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the assembly about the most holy things. And when the camp sets forward, Aharon shall come, and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil, and cover the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badger skins, and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof, and upon the table of showbread, they shall spread a cloth of blue, and put thereon the dishes, the spoons, the bowls, and covers to cover withal, and the continual bread shall be thereon. And they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with a covering of badger skins, and shall put in the staves thereof. And they shall take a cloth of blue, and cover the menorah, seven-branched candlestick, of the light, and his lamps, and his tongs, and his snuff dishes, and all the oil vessels thereof, wherewith they minister unto it. And they shall put it, and all the vessels thereof, within a covering of badger skins, and shall put it upon a bar. And upon the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue, and cover it with a covering of badger skins, and shall put the staves thereof. And they shall take all the instruments of ministry, wherewith they minister in the sanctuary, and put them in a cloth of blue, and cover them with a covering of badger skins, and shall put them on a bar. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar, and spread a purple cloth thereon. And they shall put upon all the vessels thereof, wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks, the shovels, the basins, all the vessels of the altar. And they shall spread upon it a covering of badger skins, and put to the staves of it. And when Aharon and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary, and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the assembly. And to the office of Eliezer, the son of Aharon, the priest, pertains the oil for the light, and the sweet incense, and the daily meat offering, and the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the tabernacle, and of all that therein is, in the sanctuary, 
and in the vessels thereof. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe and unto El Aharon, saying, Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of the Kohathim from among the Leviim, but thus do unto them that they may live and not die. When they approach unto the most holy things, Aharon and his sons shall go in and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden. But they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take also the sum of the sons of Gershom throughout the houses of their fathers, by their families, from thirty years old and upward, until fifty years old, shall you number them. All that enter in to perform the service, to do the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. This is the service of the families of the Gershonim, to serve and for burdens. And they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tabernacle of the assembly, his covering and the covering of the badger skins that is above upon it, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and the hangings of the court, and the hangings for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and their cords, and all the instruments of their service, and all that is made for them, so shall they serve. At the appointment of Aharon and his sons shall be all the service of the sons of the Gershonim, in all their burdens, and in all their service, and ye shall appoint unto them in charge all their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the assembly, and their charge shall be under the hand of Itamar, the son of Aharon the priest. As for the sons of Merari, you shall number them after their families, by the house of their fathers. From thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, shall you number them. Everyone that enters into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the assembly. And this is the charge of their burden, according to all their service in the tabernacle of the assembly, the boards of the tabernacle, and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and sockets thereof, and the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords, with all their instruments, and with all their service, and by name ye shall reckon the instruments of the charge of their burden. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, according to all their service in the tabernacle of the assembly, under the hand of Itamar, the son of Aharon, the priest. And Moshe and Aharon and the chief of the assembly numbered the sons of the Kohathim after their families and after the house of their fathers. From thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, everyone that enters into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. And those that were numbered of them by their families were two thousand seven hundred and fifty. These were they that were numbered of the families of the Kohathim, all that might do service in the tabernacle of the assembly, which Moshe and Aharon did number according to the commandment of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. And those that were numbered of the sons of Gershon throughout their families and by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward even unto fifty years old, everyone that enters into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly. Even those that were numbered of them throughout their families by the house of their fathers were two thousand and six hundred and thirty. These are they that were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon, of all that might do service in the tabernacle of the assembly, whom Moshe and Aharon did number according to the commandment of Yahuwah. And those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, throughout their families, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, everyone that entered into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the assembly, even those that were numbered of them after their families, were three thousand and two hundred. These be those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, whom Moshe and Aharon numbered according to the word of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. All those that were numbered of the Leviim, whom Moshe and Aharon and the chief of Yashrael numbered, after their families and after the house of their fathers, 
from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that came to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden in the tabernacle of the assembly, even those that were numbered of them, were 8,500 and fourscore. According to the commandment of Yahuwah, they were numbered by the hand of Moshe, everyone according to his service and according to his burden. Thus were they numbered of him as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 5 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yasharel, that they put out of the camp every leper, and every one that has an issue, whosoever is defiled by the dead. Both male and female shall ye put out, without the camp shall ye put them, that they defile not their camp in the midst whereof I dwell. And the children of Yashrael did so, and put them out without the camp, as Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, so did the children of Yashrael. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit, to do a trespass against Yahuwah, and that person be guilty, then they shall confess their sin which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he has trespassed. But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the trespass be recompensed unto Yahuwah, even to the priest, beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. And every offering of all the holy things of the children of Yasharel, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his. And every man's hallowed thing shall be his. Whatsoever any man gives the priest, it shall be his. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, If any man's woman go aside, and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and to be hid from the eyes of her man, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. And the Ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his woman, and she be defiled. Or if the Ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his woman, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his woman unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal, he shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near, and set her before Yahuwah. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take, and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before Yahuwah, and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with you, and if you have not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of your man, be free from this bitter water that causes the curse. But if you have gone aside to another instead of your man, and if you be defiled, and some man have lain with you beside your man. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, Yahuwah make you a curse and an oath among your people, when Yahuwah makes your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. And this water that causes the curse shall go into your bowels to make your belly to swell and your thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a sephir, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse. And the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, and shall wave the offering before Yahuwah, and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he has made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her man, that the water that causes the curse shall enter into her 
and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the Torah of jealousies, when a woman goes aside to another instead of her man, and is defiled. Or when the Ruach of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous over his woman, and shall set the woman before Yahuwah, and the priest shall execute upon her all this Torah. Then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, and his woman shall bear her iniquity. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 6 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazir, to separate themselves unto Yahuwah, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled, in which he separates himself unto Yahuwah, he shall be holy, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separates himself unto Yahuwah, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his Elohim is upon his head. All the days of his separation he is holy unto Yahuwah. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he has defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and make an atonement for him. For that he sinned by the dead, and shall hallow his head that same day. And he shall consecrate unto Yahuwah the days of his separation, and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost, because his separation was defiled. And this is the Torah of the Nazir. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and he shall offer his offering unto Yahuwah, one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for peace offerings, and a basket of matzah, unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, and wafers of matzah anointed with oil, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings. And the priest shall bring them before Yahuwah, and shall offer his sin offering, and his burnt offering, and he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto Yahuwah, with the basket of matzah. The priest shall offer also his meat offering, and his drink offering. And the Nazir shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall take the hair of the head of his separation, and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram, and one matzah cake out of the basket, and one matzah wafer, and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazir, after the hair of his separation is shaven. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. This is holy for the priest, with the wave breast and heave shoulder, and after that the Nazir may drink wine. This is the Torah of the Nazir, who has vowed and of his offering unto Yahuwah for his separation, beside that that his hand shall get, according to the vow which he vowed, so he must do after the Torah of his separation. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aharon, and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Yasharel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. 
and they shall put my name upon the children of Yasharel, and I will bless them. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 7 And it came to pass on the day that Moshe had fully set up the tabernacle, and had anointed it and sanctified it, and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Yashrael, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, and were over them that were numbered, offered. And they brought their offering before Yahuwah, six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes, and for each one an ox. And they brought them before the tabernacle. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Take it of them, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. And you shall give them unto the Leviim, to every man according to his service. And Moshe took the wagons and the oxen, and gave them unto the Leviim. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Merari, according unto their service, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aharon the priest. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. And the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed. Even the princes offered their offering before the altar. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, They shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nechshon, the son of Aminidav, of the tribe of Yehuda, And his offering was one silver charger, the weight thereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them were full of fine flour, mingled with oil for a meat offering. One spoon of ten shekels of gold, full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nechshon, the son of Aminidav. On the second day, Nethanel, the son of Tsuar, prince of Yisachar, did offer. He offered for his offering one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one spoon of gold of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nathanel, the son of Tsuar. On the third day, Eliav, the son of Chelon, prince of the children of Zebulun, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense. One young bullock, one ram. One lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliav, the son of Chelon. On the fourth day, Elaitzur, the son of Shedur, prince of the children of Reuven, did offer. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of a hundred and thirty shekels, 
one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elitzur, the son of Shedur. On the fifth day, Shalumiel, the son of Tzurishadai, prince of the children of Shimon, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Shelumiel, the son of Tzurishadai. On the sixth day, Elisaph, the son of Deuel, prince of the children of God, offered. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of a hundred and thirty shekels, a silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elisaph, the son of Deuel. On the seventh day, Elishama, the son of Amihud, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elishama, the son of Amihud. On the eighth day offered Gamaliel, the son of Pedatsur, prince of the children of Manasseh. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Piratsur. On the ninth day, Avidan, the son of Gidonai, prince of the children of Benjamin, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Avidan, the son of Gidonai. On the tenth day, Achiezer, the son of Amishadai, prince of the children of Dan, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, 
both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Achiezer, the son of Amishadai. On the eleventh day, Pagiel, the son of Okran, prince of the children of Asher, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Pagiel, the son of Okra. On the twelfth day, Achira, the son of Inan, prince of the children of Naphtali, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was a hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Achira, the son of Inan. This was the dedication of the altar, in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Yashrael, twelve chargers of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve spoons of gold, each charger of silver weighing a hundred and thirty shekels, each bowl seventy. All the silver vessels weighed two thousand and four hundred shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. The golden spoons were twelve, full of incense, weighing ten shekels apiece after the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold of the spoons was a hundred and twenty shekels. All the oxen for the burnt offering were twelve bullocks, the rams twelve, the lambs of the first year twelve, with their meat offering, and the kids of the goats for sin offering twelve. And all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offerings were twenty and four bullocks, the rams sixty, the he goats sixty the lambs of the first year sixty. This was the dedication of the altar after that it was anointed. And when Moshe was gone into the tabernacle of the assembly to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony from between the two cherubim. And he spoke unto him. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 8. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aharon, and say unto him, When you light the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the menorah. And Aharon did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the menorah, as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And this work of the menorah was of beaten gold. Unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was beaten work according unto the pattern which Yahuwah had showed Moshe, so he made the menorah. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Take the Leviim from among the children of Yasharel, and cleanse them, and thus shall you do unto them, to cleanse them. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them, and let them shave all their flesh, and let them wash their clothes, and so make themselves clean. Then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil, and another young bullock shall you take for a sin offering, and you shall bring the Leviim before the tabernacle of the assembly, and you shall gather the whole assembly of the children of Yasharel together, and you shall bring the Leviim before Yahuwah, and the children of Yasharel shall put their hands upon the Leviim. 
and Aharon shall offer the Levi'im before Yahuwah for an offering of the children of Yasharel, that they may execute the service of Yahuwah. And the Levi'im shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, and you shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, to make an atonement for the Levi'im. And you shall set the Levi'im before Aharon and before his sons, and offer them for an offering unto Yahuwah. Thus shall you separate the Levi'im from among the children of Yasharel, and the Levi'im shall be mine. And after that shall the Levi'im go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly, and you shall cleanse them and offer them for an offering. For they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Yasharel, instead of such as open every womb, even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Yasharel, have I taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Yasharel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, I sanctified them for myself. And I have taken the Levi'im for all the firstborn of the children of Yasharel. And I have given the Levi'im as a gift to Aharon and to his sons from among the children of Yasharel to do the service of the children of Yasharel in the tabernacle of the assembly and to make an atonement for the children of Yasharel, that there be no plague among the children of Yasharel, when the children of Yasharel come nigh unto the sanctuary. And Moshe and Aharon and all the assembly of the children of Yasharel did to the Leviim according unto all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe concerning the Leviim, so did the children of Yasharel unto them. And the Leviim were purified, and they washed their clothes, and Aharon offered them as an offering before Yahuwah. And Aharon made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that went the Leviim in to do their service in the tabernacle of the assembly before Aharon, and before his sons, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe concerning the Leviim, so did they unto them. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, this is that belongs unto the Leviim, from twenty and five years old and upward. They shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. And from the age of fifty years they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof, and shall serve no more, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the assembly, to guard the watch, and shall do no service. Thus shall you do unto the Leviim, touching their charge. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 9. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Mitzrayim, saying, Let the children of Yasharel also keep the Pesach at his appointed time. In the fourteenth day of this month, at evening, ye shall keep it in his appointed time. According to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. And Moshe spoke unto the children of Yashrael, that they should keep the Pesach. And they kept the Pesach on the fourteenth day of the first month at evening in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So did the children of Yashrael. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Pesach on that day. And they came before Moshe and before Aharon on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, and we may not offer an offering of Yahuwah on his appointed season among the children of Yasharel. And Moshe said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what Yahuwah will command concerning you. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, saying, If any man of you, or of your posterity, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Pesach unto Yahuwah. The fourteenth day of the second month, at evening, they shall keep it, and eat it with matzah and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it, according to all the ordinances of the Pesach they shall keep it. But the man that is clean, and is not in a journey, and forbears to keep the Pesach, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of Yahuwah 
in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you, and will keep the Pesach unto Yahuwah, according to the ordinance of the Pesach, and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger, and for him that was born in the land. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely, the tent of the testimony. And at evening there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire, until the morning. So it was always. The cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Yashrael journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Yashrael pitched their tents. At the commandment of Yahuwah, the children of Yashrael journeyed, and at the commandment of Yahuwah they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Yashrael did guard the watch of Yahuwah, and journeyed not. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of Yahuwah, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of Yahuwah, they journeyed. And so it was, when the cloud abode from evening unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days, or a month, or a year, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Yashrael abode in their tents, and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of Yahuwah they rested in their tents, and at the commandment of Yahuwah they journeyed. They guarded the watch of Yahuwah at the commandment of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 10 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Make you two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shall you make them, that you may use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the journeying of the camps. And when they shall blow them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to you at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Yasharel, shall gather themselves unto you. When ye blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. When ye blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the assembly is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aharon the priest shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, and ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before Yahuwah Elohikim, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohim. And it came to pass on the twentieth day of the second month, in the second year, that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. And the children of Yashrael took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. And they first took their journey according to the commandment of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Yehuda, according to their armies, and over his host was Nechshon, the son of Aminidav, and over the host of the tribe of the children of Yissachar was Nathanel, the son of Tsuar, and over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebulun was Eliav, the son of Chelon. And the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set forward, bearing the tabernacle. And the standard of the camp of Reuven set forward according to their armies, and over his host was Elitzur, the son of Shedur. 
and over the host of the tribe of the children of Shimon was Shelumiel, the son of Tzorishadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Elisaph, the son of Deuel. And the Kohathim set forward, bearing the sanctuary, and the other did set up the tabernacle against they came. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward according to their armies, and over his host was Elishama, the son of Amihud. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamliel, the son of Piratsur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Avidan, the son of Gidonai. And the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forward, which was the rearward of all the camps throughout their hosts. And over his host was Achiezer, the son of Amishadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pagiel, the son of Okran. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Achira, the son of Inan. Thus were the journeyings of the children of Yashrael according to their armies when they set forward. And Moshe said unto Chovav, the son of Reuel, the Midianai, Moshe's father-in-law, We are journeying unto the place of which Yahuwah said, I will give it you. Come with us, and we will do you good. For Yahuwah has spoken good concerning Yashrael. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray you, for as much as you know how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and you may be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if you go with us, yea, it shall be, that what goodness Yahuwah shall do unto us, the same will we do unto you. And they departed from the mount of Yahuwah three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah went before them in three days' journey, to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of Yahuwah was upon them by day, when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass, when the ark set forward, that Moshe said, Rise up, Yahuwah, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Yahuwah, unto the many thousands of Yashrael. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 11. And when the people complained, it displeased Yahuwah, and Yahuwah heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of Yahuwah burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moshe, and when Moshe prayed unto El Yahuwah, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Tavera, because the fire of Yahuwah burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Yashrael also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Metzraim freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all because this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of delum. And the people went about and gathered it, and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moshe heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled greatly. Moshe also was displeased. And Moshe said unto El Yahuwah, Wherefore have you afflicted your servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them? That you should say unto me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nursing father bears the sucking child unto the land which you swore unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh, that we may eat. 
I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if you deal thus with me, kill me, I pray you, out of hand. If I have found favor in your sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Yasharel, whom you know to be elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the assembly, that they may stand there with you. And I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take of the Ruach which is upon you, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you bear it not yourself alone. And say you unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of Yahuwah, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Mitzrayim. Therefore, Yahuwah will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it comes out at your nostrils, and it will be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised Yahuwah, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Misraim? And Moshe said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen, and you have said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them, to suffice them? And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Is Yahuwah's hand waxed short? You shall see now whether my word shall come to pass unto you or not. And Moshe went out and told the people the words of Yahuwah, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And Yahuwah came down in a cloud and spoke unto him, and took of the ruach that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass, that when the ruach rested upon them, they prophesied, and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the ruach rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moshe, and said, Eldad and Medad, do prophesy in the camp. And Yahusha, the son of Nun, the servant of Moshe, one of his young men answered and said, My lord Moshe, forbid them. And Moshe said unto him, Envy you for my sake? Would to Elohim that all Yahuwah's people were prophets, and that Yahuwah would put his ruach upon them. And Moshe got him into the camp he and the elders of Yashrael. And there went forth a wind from Yahuwah, and brought the quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of Yahuwah was kindled against the people, and Yahuwah smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kivrot Hat Ta'ava, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kivrot Hat Ta'ava unto Chatzeroth, and abode at Chatzeroth. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 12 And Miriam and Aharon spoke against Moshe, because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moshe? Has he not spoken also by us? And Yahuwah heard it. Now the man Moshe was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And Yahuwah spoke suddenly unto El Moshe, and unto El Aharon, and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the assembly. And they three came out. 
And Yahuwah came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aharon and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahuwah, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moshe is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches and in similitudes of Yahuwah shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moshe? And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against him, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aharon looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aharon said unto Moshe, Alas, my lord, I beseech you, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. And Moshe cried unto El Yahuwah, saying, Heal her now, O El, I beseech you. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed from Chatzeroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 13 And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Send you men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Yasharel, of every tribe of their fathers. Shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them? And Moshe, by the commandment of Yahweh, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all those men were heads of the children of Yashrael. And these were their names, of the tribe of Reuven, Shamua, the son of Zakur, of the tribe of Shimon, Shaphat, the son of Horai, of the tribe of Yahuda, Caleb, the son of Yefune, of the tribe of Yisachar, Yigal, the son of Yosef, of the tribe of Ephraim, Husha, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Rafu, of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi, of the tribe of Yosef, namely, of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi, of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali, of the tribe of Asher, Setur, son of Mikael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nachbi, the son of Vofsi, of the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men which Moshe sent to spy out the land. And Moshe called Husha, the son of Nun, Yahusha. And Moshe sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up, and searched the land from the wilderness of Sin unto Rehov, as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the Negev, and came unto Hebron, where Achiman, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Anak were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Tsoan in Mitzrayim. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates, and of the figs. The place was called Nachal Eshkol, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Yashrael cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. 
And they went and came to El Moshe, and to El Ahron, and to all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the assembly, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekim dwell in the land of the Negev, and the Hittim, and the Yevusim, and the Imorim dwell in the mountains, and the Kinanim dwell by the sea, and by the coast of the Yardan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moshe, and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Yashrael, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, which come of the Nephilim, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 14. And all the assembly lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Yashrael murmured against Moshe and against Aharon. And the whole assembly said unto them, Would to Elohim that we had died in the land of Mitzrayim, or would to Elohim we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore has Yahuwah brought us unto this land, to fall by the sword, that our women and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Mitzrayim? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Mitzrayim. Then Moshe and Naharon fell on their faces before all the assembly of the multitude of the children of Yashrael. And Yahusha, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Yafune, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spoke unto all the company of the children of Yashrael, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If Yahuwah delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only rebel ye not against Yahuwah, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. But all the assembly bade stone them with stones, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the tabernacle of the assembly before all the children of Yashrael. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence, and disinherit them, and will make of you a greater nation, and mightier than they. And Moshe said unto El Yahuwah, Then the Mitzrayim shall hear it, for you brought up this people in your might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that you, Yahuwah, are among this people, that you, Yahuwah, are seen face to face, and that your cloud stands over them, and that you go before them, by daytime in a pillar of cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you shall kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of you will speak, saying, Because Yahuwah was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now, I beseech you, let the power of my Adonai be great, according as you have spoken, saying, Yahuwah is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech you, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of your mercy, and as you have forgiven this people, 
from Mitzrayim even until now. And Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to your word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahuwah. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Mitzrayim and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another Ruach with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekim and the Kenanim dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you, and get you into the wilderness, by the way of the Red Sea. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe, and unto El Aharon, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil assembly, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Yasharel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, says Yahuwah, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Yefuneh, and Yahusha, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, Yahuwah, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil assembly that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moshe sent to search the land, who returned and made all the assembly to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before Yahuwah. But Yahusha, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Yefune, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moshe told these things unto all the children of Yashrael, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning, and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which Yahuwah has promised, for we have sinned. And Moshe said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of Yahuwah? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for Yahuwah is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekim and the Kenanim are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from Yahuwah. Therefore Yahuwah will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the top of the hill. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah and Moshe departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekim came down, and the Kenanim, which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 15 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When ye are come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto Yahuwah, a burnt offering, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, or in a free will offering, or in your solemn feasts, to make a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, of the herd or of the flock. Then shall he that offers his offering unto Yahuwah bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour, mingled with the fourth part of a hen of oil, and the fourth part of a hen of wine, for a drink offering shall you prepare with the burnt offering or sacrifice, for one lamb, or for a ram, 
you shall prepare for a meat offering two tenths deals of flour mingled with the third part of a hen of oil. And for a drink offering you shall offer the third part of a hen of wine, for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And when you prepare a bullock for a burnt offering, or for a sacrifice in performing a vow, or peace offerings unto Yahuwah, then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three tenths deals of flour mingled with a half a hen of oil. And you shall bring for a drink offering half a hen of wine, for an offering made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Thus shall it be done for one bullock, or for one ram, or for a lamb, or a kid. According to the number that ye shall prepare, so shall ye do, to every one according to their number. All that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner, in offering an offering made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, as ye do, so he shall do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the assembly, and also for the stranger that sojourns with you, an ordinance forever in your generations. As ye are, so shall the stranger be before Yahuwah. One Torah and one manner of law shall be for you, and for the stranger that sojourns with you. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land whither I bring you, then it shall be, that when ye eat of the bread of the land, ye shall offer up a heave offering unto Yahuwah. Ye shall offer up a cake of the first of your dough for a heave offering. As ye do the heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye heave it. Of the first of your dough, ye shall give it unto Yahuwah, a heave offering in your generations. And if ye have erred, and not observed all these commandments, which Yahuwah has spoken unto Moshe, even all that Yahuwah has commanded you by the hand of Moshe, from the day that Yahuwah commanded Moshe, and henceforth among your generations, then it shall be, if aught be committed by ignorance, without the knowledge of the assembly, that all the assembly shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering, for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, with his meat offering, and his drink offering, according to the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the assembly of the children of Yasharel, and it shall be forgiven them, for it is ignorance. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah, and their sin offering before Yahuwah, for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven all the assembly of the children of Yasharel, and the stranger that sojourns among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sins ignorantly, when he sins by ignorance before Yahuwah, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. Ye shall have one Torah for him that sins through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Yasharel, and for the stranger that sojourns among them. But the soul that does aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches Yahuwah, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because he has despised the word of Yahuwah, and has broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off, his iniquity shall be upon him. And while the children of Yashrael were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Shabbat. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto El Moshe, and El Aharon, and unto all the assembly and they put him in ward, because it was not declared what should be done to him. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, The man shall surely be put to death. All the assembly shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the assembly brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and bid them that they make them zitzits, a tassel or a fringe, in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the zitzit of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you a zitzit, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, which ye use to go a whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your Elohim. 
I am Yahuwah Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohim. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 16. Now Korach, the son of Yitzchar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Aviram, the sons of Eliav, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moshe, with certain of the children of Yashrael, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the assembly, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moshe, and against Aharon, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the assembly are holy, every one of them, and Yahuwah is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the assembly of Yahuwah. And when Moshe heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spoke unto Korach and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow Yahuwah will show who are his, and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take you censers, Korach, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before Yahuwah tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom Yahuwah chooses, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moshe said unto Korach, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, does it seem but a small thing unto you? that the Elohai of Yashrael has separated you from the assembly of Yashrael, to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of Yahuwah, and to stand before the assembly to minister unto them? And he has brought you near to him, and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you, and seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against Yahuwah? And what is Aharon that ye murmur against him? And Moshe sent to call Dathan and Aviram, the sons of Eliav, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of a land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except you make yourselves altogether a prince over us. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moshe was very wroth, and said unto el Yahuwah, Respect not you their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moshe said unto Korach, Be you and all your company before Yahuwah, you and they, and Aharon tomorrow and take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before Yahuwah every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, you also, and Aharon, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the assembly with Moshe and Aharon. And Korach gathered all the assembly against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto all the assembly. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and unto El Aharon, saying, Separate yourselves from among this assembly, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O El, the Elohai of the Ruachoth of all flesh, shall one man sin? And will you be wroth with all the assembly? And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the assembly, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korach, Dathan, and Aviram. And Moshe rose up and went unto Dathan and Aviram, and the elders of Yashrael followed him. And he spoke unto the assembly, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korach, Dathan, and Aviram, on every side. And Dathan and Aviram came out, and stood in the door of their tents, and their women, and their sons, 
and their little children. And Moshe said, Hereby ye shall know that Yahuwah has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Yahuwah has not sent me. But if Yahuwah make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Yahuwah. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korach, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the assembly. And all Yashrael that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from Yahuwah, and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto Eliezer, the son of Aharon the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter you the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar. For they offered them before Yahuwah, therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Yasharel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, wherewith they that were burnt had offered. And they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Yashrael, that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aharon, come near to offer incense before Yahuwah, that he be not as Korach and his company, as Yahuwah said to him by the hand of Moshe. But on the morrow, all the assembly of the children of Yashrael murmured against Moshe and against Aharon, saying, Ye have killed the people of Yahuwah. And it came to pass, when the assembly was gathered against Moshe and against Aharon, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the assembly, and, behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared. And Moshe and Aharon came before the tabernacle of the assembly. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Get you up from among this assembly, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moshe said unto El Aharon, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the assembly, and make an atonement for them, for there is wrath gone out from Yahuwah. The plague is begun. And Aharon took as Moshe commanded, and ran into the midst of the assembly, and, behold, the plague was begun among the people, and he put on incense, and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were fourteen thousand and seven hundred, beside them that died about the matter of Korach. And Aharon returned unto Moshe, unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and the plague was stayed. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 17 And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers. Of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write you every man's name upon his rod. And you shall write Aharon's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And you shall lay them up in the tabernacle of the assembly, before the testimony, where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass, that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Yasharel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moshe spoke unto the children of Yasharel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece, for each prince one, according to their father's houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aharon was among their rods. 
and Moshe laid up the rods before Yahuwah in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moshe went into the tabernacle of witness, and, behold, the rod of Aharon for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and blossomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. And Moshe brought out all the rods from before Yahuwah unto the children of Yashrael, and they looked, and took every man his rod. And Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Bring Aharon's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a sign against the sons of rebellion, and you shall quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. And Moshe did so, as Yahuwah commanded him, so did he. And the children of Yashrael spoke unto Moshe, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever comes anything near unto the tabernacle of Yahuwah shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 18. And Yahuwah said unto El Aharon, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And your brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring with you that they may be joined unto you and minister unto you. But you and your sons with you shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. And they shall guard your watch and the watch of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. And they shall be joined unto you, and guard the watch of the tabernacle of the assembly, for all the service of the tabernacle, and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. And ye shall guard the watch of the sanctuary, and the watch of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Yasharel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren the Leviim from among the children of Yasharel. To you they are given as a gift for Yahuwah to do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. Therefore you and your sons with you shall guard your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Aharon, Behold, I also have given you the charge of my heave offerings, of all the hallowed things of the children of Yasharel. Unto you have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to your sons by an ordinance forever. This shall be yours of the most holy things, reserved from the fire, every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for you and for your sons. In the most holy place shall you eat it, every male shall eat it, it shall be holy unto you. And this is yours, the heave offering of their gift, with all the wave offerings of the children of Yasharel. I have given them unto you, and to your sons, and to your daughters with you, by a statute forever. Every one that is clean in your house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto Yahuwah, them have I given you. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto Yahuwah, shall be yours. Every one that is clean in your house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Yasharel shall be yours. Everything that opens the womb in all flesh, which they bring unto Yahuwah, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be yours. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall you surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shall you redeem. And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall you redeem according to your estimation. For the money of five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty geras. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire. 
for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the flesh of them shall be yours, as the wave breast and as the right shoulder are yours. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Yasharel offer unto Yahuwah have I given you, and your sons and your daughters with you, by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before Yahuwah unto you and to your seed with you. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Aharon, You shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any part among them. I am your part, and your inheritance among the children of Yasharel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Yasharel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. Neither must the children of Yasharel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the assembly, lest they bear sin and die. But the Leviim shall do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Yasharel they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Yasharel, which they offer as a heave offering unto Yahuwah, I have given to the Leviim to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Yasharel, they shall have no inheritance. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Thus speak unto the Leviim, and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Yasharel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering of it for Yahuwah, even a tenth part of the tithe. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you, as though it were the grain of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the winepress. Thus ye also shall offer a heave offering unto Yahuwah, of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Yasharel, and ye shall give thereof Yahuwah's heave offering to Aharon the priest. Out of all your gifts ye shall offer every heave offering of Yahuwah, of all the best thereof, even the hallowed part thereof out of it. Therefore you shall say unto them, When ye have heaved the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Leviim as the increase of the threshing floor, and as the increase of the winepress. And ye shall eat it in every place, ye and your household, for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the assembly. And ye shall bear no sin by reason of it, when ye have heaved from it the best of it, neither shall ye pollute the holy things of the children of Yasharel, lest ye die. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 19 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, and unto El Aharon, saying, This is the ordinance of the Torah which Yahuwah has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, that they bring you a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eliezer the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eliezer the priest shall take of her blood with his finger, and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the assembly seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, and her skin, and her flesh, and her blood, with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood, and hyssop, and scarlet, and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. And the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. And he that burns her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the evening. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place, and it shall be kept for the assembly of the children of Yasharel, for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. And he that gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the evening. And it shall be unto the children of Yasharel, and unto the stranger that sojourns among them, for a statute forever. He that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. 
he shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead, and purifies not himself, defiles the tabernacle of Yahuwah. And that soul shall be cut off from Yasharel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. This is the Torah, when a man dies in a tent, all that come into the tent, and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which has no covering bound upon it is unclean. And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open field, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. And for an unclean person they shall take the ashes of the burnt heifer, of purification for sin, and running water shall be put thereto in a vessel. And a clean person shall take hyssop, and dip it in the water, and sprinkle it upon the tent, and upon all the vessels, and upon the persons that were there, and upon him that touched a bone, or one slain, or one dead, or a grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day, and on the seventh day, and on the seventh day, he shall purify himself, and wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and shall be clean at evening. But the man that shall be unclean, and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the assembly, because he has defiled the sanctuary of Yahuwah. The water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him, he is unclean. And it shall be a perpetual statute unto them, that he that sprinkles the water of separation shall wash his clothes, and he that touches the water of separation shall be unclean until evening. And whatsoever the unclean person touches shall be unclean, and the soul that touches it shall be unclean until evening. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 20 Then came the children of Yashrael, even the whole assembly, into the desert of Sin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there, and was buried there. And there was no water for the assembly, and they gathered themselves together against Moshe, and against Aharon. And the people chode with Moshe, and spoke, saying, Would to Elohim that we had died when our brethren died before Yahuwah! And why have we brought up the assembly of Yahuwah into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Mitzrayim to bring us into this evil place? Is it no place of seed, or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates? Neither is there any water to drink. And Moshe and Aharon went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto them. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take the rod, and gather the assembly together, you and Aharon your brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So you shall give the assembly and their beasts drink. And Moshe took the rod from before Yahuwah as he commanded him. And Moshe and Aharon gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moshe lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly, and the assembly drank, and their beasts also. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe and El Aharon, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Yasharel, therefore ye shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Yashrael strove with Yahuwah, and he was sanctified in them. And Moshe sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Yashrael, You know all the travail that has befallen us, how our fathers went down into Mitzrayim, and we have dwelt in Mitzrayim a long time, and the Mitzrayim vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto El Yahuwah, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and has brought us forth out of Mitzrayim. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of your border. 
Let us pass, I pray you, through your country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed your borders. And Edom said unto him, You shall not pass by me, lest I come out against you with the sword. And the children of Yashrael said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of your water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, You shall not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people, and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Yashrael passage through his border. Wherefore Yashrael turned away from him. And the children of Yashrael, even the whole assembly, journeyed from Kadesh, and came unto Mount Hor. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe and El Aharon in Mount Hor, by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aharon shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Yasharel, because ye rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Take Aharon and Eliezer his son, and bring them up unto Mount Hor, and strip Aharon of his garments, and put them upon Eliezer his son, and Aharon shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the assembly. And Moshe stripped Aharon of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aharon died there in the top of the mount. And Moshe and Eleazar came down from the mount. And when all the assembly saw that Aharon was dead, they mourned for Aharon thirty days, even all the house of Yashrael. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 21 And when King Arad the Kenani, which dwelt in the Negev, heard tell that Yashrael came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Yashrael, and took some of them prisoners. And Yashrael vowed a vow unto Yahuwah, and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Yashrael and delivered up the Kenanim, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Horma. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spoke against Elohim and against Moshe. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Mitzrayim to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. And Yahuwah set fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Yashrael died. Therefore the people came to Moshe and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahuwah and against you. Pray unto El Yahuwah that he take away the serpents from us. And Moshe prayed for the people. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Make you a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. And Moshe made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Yashrael set forward, and pitched in Ovoth, and they journeyed from Ovoth, and pitched at Ie ha Avairim, in the wilderness which is before Moab, toward the sun rising. From thence they removed, and pitched in the valley of Zered. From thence they removed, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that comes out of the coasts of the Emorim. For Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Emorim. Wherefore it is said in the Sefer of the Wars of Yahuwah, What he did in the Red Sea, and in the brooks of Arnon, and at the stream of the brooks that goes down to the dwelling of Ar, and lies upon the border of Moab. And from thence they went to Be'er, 
that is the well whereof Yahweh spoke unto Moshe. Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Yashrael sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The prince has dug the well. The nobles of the people dug it by the direction of the Torah giver with their staffs. And from the wilderness they went to Matana, and from Matana to Nachaliel, and from Nachaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley that is in the country of Moab to the top of Pigkah, which looks towards Yeshimon. And Yashrael sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Emorim, saying, Let me pass through your land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well. But we will go along by the king's highway until we be past your borders. And Sihon would not suffer Yashrael to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Yashrael into the wilderness. And he came to Yachatz and fought against Yashrael. And Yashrael smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon unto Yabok, even unto the children of Ammon, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Yashrael took all these cities, and Yashrael dwelt in all the cities of the Emorim, in Cheshbon, and in all the villages thereof. For Cheshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Emorim, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore, they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Cheshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Cheshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It has consumed Ar of Moab, and Baale, Bamoth of Arnon. Woe to you, Moab! You are undone, O people of Chemosh. He has given his sons that escaped, and his daughters, into captivity unto Sihon, king of the Emorim. We have shot at them. Cheshbon is perished even unto Daivon, and we have laid them waste even unto Nofach, which reaches unto Medeva. Thus Yashrael dwelt in the land of the Emorim. And Moshe sent to spy out Yaezer, and they took the villages thereof, and drove out the Emorim that were there. And they turned and went up by the way of Bashan. And Og, king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle of Edrei. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into your hand, and all his people, and his land. And you shall do to him, as you did unto Sihon, king of the Emorim, which dwelt at Cheshbon. So they smote him, and his sons, and all his people, until there was none left him alive, and they possessed his land. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 22 and the children of Yashrael set forward, and pitched in the plains of Moab, on this side of the Yardan, by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Yashrael had done to the Emorim. And Moab was sore afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Yashrael. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now this company licks up all that are round about us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moavim at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Bilam, the son of Beor, to Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Mitzrayim. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray you, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Perchance I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. 
And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spoke unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as Yahuwah shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And Elohim came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with you? And Balaam said unto Elohim, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Mitzrayim, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Perchance I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And Elohim said unto Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Bilam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for Yahuwah refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Bilam refuses to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more, and more honorable than they. And they came to Bilam, and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, let nothing I pray you hinder you from coming unto me, for I will promote you unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever you say unto me. Come therefore, I pray you, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of Yahweh Elohai, to do less or more. Now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night that I may know what Yahuwah will say unto me. And Elohim came unto Bilam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call you, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto you, that shall you do. And Bilam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And Elohim's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of Yahuwah stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of Yahuwah standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Bilam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of Yahuwah stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of Yahuwah, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Bilam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of Yahuwah went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of Yahuwah, she fell down under Bilam, and Bilam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff, and Yahuwah opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Bilam, What have I done unto you, that you have smitten me these three times? And Bilam said unto the ass, Because you have mocked me. I would there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. And the ass said unto Bilam, Am I not your ass, upon which you have ridden ever since I was yours unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto you? And he said, Nay. Then Yahuwah opened the eyes of Bilam, and he saw the angel of Yahuwah standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto him, Wherefore have you smitten your ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand you, because your way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain you, and saved her alive. And Bilam said unto the angel of Yahuwah, I have sinned, for I knew not that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease you, I will get me back again. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto Bilam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto you, that you shall speak. So Bilam went with the princes of Balak. 
And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto you to call you? Wherefore came you not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote you to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto you. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that Elohim puts in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Bilam went with Balak, and they came unto Kiryat Chutzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow, that Balak took Bilam, and brought him up unto the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. Bemidbar, Numbers, chapter 23. And Bilam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Bilam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Bilam said unto Balak, Stand you by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perchance Yahuwah will come to meet me, and whatsoever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a high place, and Elohim met Bilam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And Yahuwah put a word in Bilam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me Yaakov, and come, defy Yashrael. How shall I curse whom El has not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom Yahuwah has not defied? For from the tops of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Yaakov? and the number of the fourth part of Yashrael, Let me die the death of the Yasharim, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Bilam, What have you done unto me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which Yahuwah has put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray you, with me unto another place, from whence you may see them. You shall see but the uttermost part of them, and shall not see them all, and curse me them from thence. And he brought him unto the field of Tsophim, to the top of Pigkah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by your burnt offering, while I meet Yahuwah yonder. And Yahuwah met Bilam and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What has Yahuwah spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, you son of Zippor. El is not a man, that he should lie, neither the son of Adam, that he should repent. He has said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Yaakov, neither has he seen perverseness in Yashrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. El brought them out of Mitzrayim. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Yaakov, neither is there any divination against Yashrael. According to this time it shall be said of Yaakov and of Yashrael, What has El wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey, and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Bilam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Bilam answered and said unto Balak, 
told not I you, saying, All that Yahuwah speaks, that I must do? And Balak said unto Bilam, Come, I pray you, I will bring you unto another place. Perchance it will please Elohim that you may curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Bilam unto the top of Peor, that looks towards Yeshimun. And Bilam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 24 And when Bilaam saw that it pleased Yahuwah to bless Yashrael, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments. But he set his face toward the wilderness. And Bilaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Yashrael abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Ruach Elohim came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Bilaam, the son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, He has said, Which heard the words of El, Which saw the vision of El Shaddai, Falling into a trance, But having his eyes open. How goodly are your tents, O Yaakov, And your tabernacles, O Yashrael, As the valleys are they spread forth, As gardens by the river's side, As the trees of line aloes, Which Yahuwah has planted, And as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. El brought him forth out of Mitzrayim. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies, and shall break their bones, and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesses you, and cursed is he that curses you. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee to your place. I thought to promote you unto great honor, but lo, Yahuwah has kept you back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spoke I not also to your messengers which you sent unto me, saying, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahuwah, to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what Yahuwah says, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise what this people shall do to your people in the latter days. And he took up his parable and said, Bilam, the son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, He has said, which heard the words of El, and knew the knowledge of El Elyon, which saw the visions of El Shaddai, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Yaakov, and a scepter shall rise out of Yashrael, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Yashrael shall do valiantly. Out of Yaakov shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remains of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenim, and took up his parable and said, Strong is your dwelling place and you put your nest in a rock. Nevertheless, Kaini shall be wasted until Ashur shall carry you away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when El does this? And ships shall come from the coast of Kittim, and shall afflict Ashur, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Bilam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 25 And Yashrael abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their Elohim. And the people did eat, and bowed down to their Elohim. And Yashrael joined himself unto Baal Peor. 
and the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yashrael. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before Yahuwah against the sun, that the fierce anger of Yahuwah may be turned away from Yashrael. And Moshe said unto the judges of Yashrael, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Yashrael came and brought unto his brethren a Midianiteth woman in the sight of Moshe and in the sight of all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And when Pinechas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the assembly and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Yashrael into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Yashrael and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Yashrael. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Pinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aharon the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Yashrael, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Yashrael in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his Elohim, and made an atonement for the children of Yashorel. Now the name of the Yashorelai that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianiteth woman, was Zimri, the son of Kalu, a prince of a chief house among the Shimonim. And the name of the Midianai woman that was slain was Kozbai, the daughter of Tsur. He was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Vex the Midianim and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Kozbi the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. Bemidbar, Numbers, chapter 26. And it came to pass after the plague that Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe and unto Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the assembly of the children of Yasharel from twenty years old and upward, throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Yasharel. And Moshe and Eleazar the priest spoke with them in the plains of Moab, by the Yardan, near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from twenty years old and upward, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe, and the children of Yasharel, which went forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. Reuven, the eldest son of Yasharel, the children of Reuven, Chanok, of whom comes the family of the Chanukim, of Palu, the family of the Paluim, of Chetzron, the family of the Chetzronim, of Karmai, the family of the Karmiim. These are the families of the Reuvim, and they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliav, and the sons of Eliav, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Aviram. This is that Dathan and Aviram which were famous in the assembly, who strove against Moshe and against Aharon in the company of Korach when they strove against Yahuwah. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korach. When that company died, what time the fire devoured the two hundred and fifty men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korach died not. The sons of Shimon, after their families, of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelim, of Yamin, the family of the Yaminim, of Yakin, the family of the Yakinim, of Zerach, the family of the Zerachim, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulim. These are the families of the Shimonim, twenty and two thousand and two hundred. The children of Gad, after their families, Tsephon, the family of the Tsephonim, of Haggai, the family of the Haggiim, 
of Shunai, the family of the Shunaim, of Oznai, the family of the Ozniim, of Irai, the family of the Iraim, of Arod, the family of the Arodim, of Arelai, the family of the Arelaim. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, forty thousand and five hundred. The sons of Yahuda were Er and Onan, and Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Yahuda after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanim, of Peretz, the family of the Partzim, of Zerach, the family of the Zarchim, and the sons of Peretz were of Chetzron, the family of the Chetzronim, of Chamul, the family of the Chamulim. These are the families of Yehuda, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Yisachar, after their families, of Tola, the family of the Tolaim, of Pua, the family of the Punim, of Yashuv, the family of the Yashuvim, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronim. These are the families of Yisachar, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, after their families, of Sered, the family of the Kardim, of Elon, the family of the Elonim, of Yachleel, the family of the Yachleelim. These are the families of the Zebulonim, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore thousand and five hundred. The sons of Yosef, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Makir, the family of the Makirim. And Makir begot Gilad. Of Gilad come the family of the Giladim. These are the sons of Gilad. Of Iezer, the family of the Iezerim. Of Chelek, the family of the Chelekim. And of Asriel, the family of the Asrielim. And of Shechem, the family of the Shechemim. And of Shemida, the family of the Shemidaim. And of Chefer, the family of the Cheferim and Selophachad, the son of Chefer, had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Selophchad were Machla and Noah, Chogla, Milka, and Tirza. These are the families of Manasseh, and those that were numbered of them, fifty and two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim, after their families, of Shuthelach. The family of the Shutelachim, of Beker, the family of the Bakrim, of Tachan, the family of the Tachanim, and these are the sons of Shutelach, of Iran, the family of the Iranim. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. These are the sons of Yosef after their families, the sons of Benjamin after their families. Of Bela, the family of the Baliim, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelim, of Achiram, the family of the Achiramim, of Shefufam, the family of the Shefufamim, of Chufam, the family of the Chufamim, and the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the family of the Ardim, and of Naaman, the family of the Namiim. These are the sons of Benjamin, after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the sons of Dan, after their families, of Chushim, the family of the Chushimim. These are the families of Dan, after their families, all the families of the Chushimim, according to those that were numbered of them, were threescore and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Asher. After their families, Yimna, the family of the Yimnachim, of Yishvai, the family of the Yishviim, of Beria, the family of the Beriim, of the sons of Beria, of Chever, the family of the Cheverim, of Malkiel, the family of the Malkielim, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Serach. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them. 
who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, Yachtsel, the family of the Yachtselim, of Gunai, the family of the Gunaim, of Yetzer, the family of the Yetzerim, of Shilem, the family of the Shimeleim. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were numbered of the children of Yashrael, six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. Too many you shall give the more inheritance, and too few you shall give the less inheritance. To everyone shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. They shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Leviim, after their families, of Gershon, the family of the Gershonim, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathim, of Merari, the family of the Merarim. These are the families of the Leviim, the family of the Leviim, the family of the Chevronim, the family of the Machlim, the family of the Mushim, the family of the Korchiim, and Kohath begat Amram. And the name of Amram's woman was Yokeved, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bore to Levi in Mitzrayim. And she bore unto Amram, Aharon, and Moshe, and Miriam, their sister. And unto Aharon was born Nadav, and Avihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, and Nadav and Avihu died, when they offered strange fire before Yahuwah. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward. For they were not numbered among the children of Yashrael, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Yashrael. These are they that were numbered by Moshe and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Yashrael in the plains of Moab by the Yardan near Jericho. But among these was not a man of them whom Moshe and Aharon the priest numbered. For when they numbered the children of Yashrael in the wilderness of Sinai, for Yahuwah had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Yefune, and Yahusha the son of Nun. Bemidbar Numbers chapter 27 Then came the daughters of Tselophachad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilad, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Yosef. And these are the names of his daughters, Machla, Noah, Cholga, Milka, and Tirza. And they stood before Moshe, and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes and all the assembly, by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against Yahuwah and the company of Korach, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he has no son? Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moshe brought their cause before Yahuwah, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. You shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and you shall cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And you shall speak unto the children of Yasharel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Yasharel a statute of judgment, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Get you up unto this mount Avarim, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Yasharel. And when you have seen it, 
you also shall be gathered unto your people, as Aharon your brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Sin, in the strife of the assembly, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes, that is, the water of Meribah, in Kadesh, in the wilderness of Sin. And Moshe spoke unto El Yahuwah, saying, Let Yahuwah, the Elohai of the Ruachoth of all flesh, set a man over the assembly, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the assembly of Yahuwah be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Take Yahusha, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Ruach, and lay your hand upon him, and set him before Eliezer the priest, and before all the assembly, and give him a charge in their sight. And you shall put some of your honor upon him, that all the assembly of the children of Yasharel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of the Urim before Yahuwah. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Yasharel with him, even all the assembly. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded him. And he took Yahusha, and set him before Eliezer the priest, and before all the assembly. And he laid his hands upon him, and gave him a charge, as Yahuwah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 28 And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, my offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet savor unto me, shall ye guard to offer unto me in their appointed time. And ye shall say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto Yahuwah, two lambs of the first year, without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shall you offer in the morning, and the other lamb shall you offer at evening, and a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. And the drink offering thereof shall be a fourth part of a hen for the one lamb. In the holy place shall you cause the strong wine to be poured unto Yahuwah for a drink offering. And the other lamb shall you offer at evening, as the meat offering of the morning, as the drink offering thereof, you shall offer it, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And on the Shabbat, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenths deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Shabbat, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your months ye shall offer a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three-tenths deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, for one bullock, and two-tenths deal of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, for one ram, and a several-tenths deal of flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. And their drink offerings shall be half a hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of a hen unto a ram, and a fourth part of a hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto Yahuwah shall be offered, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Pesach, Passover of Yahuwah. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast, seven days shall matzah, unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be a holy assembly. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein, but ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three-tenths deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two-tenths deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shall you offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. 
Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily, throughout the seven days, the meat of the sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have a holy assembly, ye shall do no servile work. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto Yahuwah, after your weeks be out, ye shall have a holy assembly, ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lamps of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenths deals unto one bullock, two-tenths deals unto one ram, and several-tenths deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish and their drink offerings. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 29. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy assembly. Ye shall do no servile work, it is Yom Teruah, the day of blowing the shofar, the day of the awakening blast unto you. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenths deals for a bullock, and two-tenths deals for a ram and one-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Beside the burnt offering of the month and his meat offering and the daily burnt offering and his meat offering and their drink offerings, according unto their manner, for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah, and ye shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month a holy assembly. Ye shall afflict your souls. Ye shall not do any work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering unto Yahuwah for a sweet savor, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenths deals to a bullock, and two-tenths deals to one ram, a several-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the sin offering of atonement, and the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering of it, and their drink offerings. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month ye shall have a holy assembly, ye shall do no servile work, and ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year. They shall be without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenths deals unto every bullock of the thirteen bullocks, two-tenths deals to each ram of the two rams and a several-tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteen lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the second day ye shall offer twelve young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number, after the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering thereof, and their drink offerings. And on the third day, eleven bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number after the manner and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fourth day, ten bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, without blemish. 
their meat offering and their drink offering for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number, after the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering and his drink offering, and on the fifth day nine bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, without spot, and their meat offering and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the sixth day, eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. On the eighth day, ye shall have a solemn assembly, ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah one bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, without blemish, their meat offering and their drink offerings, for the bullock, for the ram, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner, and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things ye shall do unto Yahuwah in your set feasts, beside your vows and your free will offerings, for your burnt offerings, and for your meat offerings, and for your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. And Moshe told the children of Yashrael according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 30. And Moshe spoke unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Yashrael, saying, this is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded. If a man vow a vow unto Yahuwah, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto Yahuwah, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she has bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he hears, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. And Yahuwah shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all a man, when she vowed or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her man heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her man disallow her on the day he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and all that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of no effect, and Yahuwah shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her man's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her man heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her man utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her man has made them void, and Yahuwah shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her man may establish it or her man may make it void. But if her man altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, 
Then he establishes all her vows, or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirms them, because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall any ways make them void after that he heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which Yahuwah commanded Moshe, between a man and his woman, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 31. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Avenge the children of Yasharel of the Midianim. Afterward shall you be gathered unto your people. And Moshe spoke unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianim, and avenge Yahuwah of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand, throughout all the tribes of Yashrael shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Yashrael a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moshe sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Pinechas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments, and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianim, as Yahweh commanded Moshe, and they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely, Evi, and Rechem, and Sur, and Chorai, and Reva, five kings of Midian. Bilam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Yashrael took all the women of Midian captives, and their little ones, and took the spoil of all their cattle, and all their flocks, and all their goods. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt, and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil, and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. And they brought the captives, and the prey, and the spoil unto Moshe, and Eleazar the priest, and unto the assembly of the children of Yashrael, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by the Yardan, near Jericho. And Moshe, and Eleazar the priest, and all the princes of the assembly, went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moshe was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moshe said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Yashrael, through the counsel of Bilam, to commit transgression against Yahuwah in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the assembly of Yahuwah. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones, every woman that has known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days, whosoever has killed any person, and whosoever has touched any slain. Purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day, and on the seventh day. And purify all your raiment, and all that is made of skins, and all work of goat's hair, and all things made of wood. And Eleazar the priest said unto the men of war which went to the battle, This is the ordinance of the Torah, which Yahuwah commanded Moshe, only the gold and the silver and the brass and the iron and the tin and the lead, everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation, and all that abides not the fire, ye shall make go through the water and ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean, and afterward ye shall come into the camp. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, you and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the assembly, and divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle, and between all the assembly and levy a tribute unto Yahuwah of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons, and of the cattle, and of the asses, and of the sheep. Take it of their half, and give it unto Eliezer the priest, for a heave offering of Yahuwah. 
and of the children of Yasharel's half. You shall take one portion of fifty, of the persons, of the cattle, of the asses, and of the flocks, of all manner of beasts, and give them unto the Leviim, which guard the watch of the tabernacle of Yahuwah. And Moshe and Eleazar the priest did as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And the booty, being the rest of the prey which the men of war had caught, was six hundred thousand and seventy thousand and five thousand sheep, and threescore and twelve thousand cattle, and threescore and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all, of women that had not known man by lying with him. And the half, which was the portion of them that went out to war, was in number three hundred thousand and seven and thirty thousand and five hundred sheep. And Yahuwah's tribute of the sheep was six hundred and threescore and fifteen. And the cattle were thirty and six thousand, of which Yahuwah's tribute was threescore and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which Yahuwah's tribute was threescore and one. And the persons were sixteen thousand, of which Yahuwah's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moshe gave the tribute, which was Yahuwah's heave offering, unto Eleazar the priest, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And of the children of Yashrael's half, which Moshe divided from the men that warred, now the half that pertained unto the assembly was three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep and thirty and six thousand cattle, and thirty thousand asses, and five hundred, and sixteen thousand persons. Even the children of Yashrael's half, Moshe took one portion of fifty, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Leviim, which did guard the watch of the tabernacle of Yahuwah, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And the officers, which were over thousands of the host, the captains of thousands, and captains of hundreds came near unto El Moshe. And they said unto El Moshe, Your servants have taken the sum of the men of war, which are under our charge, and there lacks not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for Yahuwah, that every man has gotten, of jewels of gold, chains and bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before Yahuwah. And Moshe and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels, and all the gold of the offering that they offered up to Yahuwah, of the captains of thousands, and of the captains of hundreds, was sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil, every man for himself. And Moshe and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands, and of hundreds, and brought it into the tabernacle of the assembly, for a memorial for the children of Yashrael before Yahuwah. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 32. Now the children of Reuven and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Yaazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuven came and spoke unto Moshe, and to Eleazar the priest, and unto the princes of the assembly, saying, Atoroth, Daivon, Yaezir, and Nimrah, and Cheshbon, and El Allah, and Sevam, and Nevu, and Beon, even the country which Yahuwah smote before the assembly of Yasharel, is a land for cattle and your servants have cattle. Wherefore said they, If we have found grace in your sight, let this land be given unto your servants for a possession, and bring us not over the Yardon. And Moshe said unto the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuven, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Yashrael? from going over into the land which Yahuwah has given them. Thus did your fathers, when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea, to see the land. For when they went up unto the valley of Eshkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Yashrael, that they should not go into the land which Yahuwah had given them. And Yahuwah's anger was kindled the same time. And he swore, saying, 
Surely, none of the men that came up out of Mitzrayim from twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swore unto Avraham, unto Yitzchak, and unto Yaakov, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb, the son of Yefune, the Kenizai, and Yahusha, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed Yahuwah. And Yahuwah's anger was kindled against Yashrael, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of Yahuwah was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men, to augment yet the fierce anger of Yahuwah toward El Yashrael. For if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all this people. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle, and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Yasharel, until we have brought them in unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Yasharel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side of the Yardan, or forward, because our inheritance has fallen to us on this side of the Yardan, eastward. And Moshe said unto them, If ye will do this thing, if ye will go armed before Yahweh to war, and will go all of you armed over the Yardan before Yahuwah until he has driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before Yahuwah. Then afterward ye shall return, and be guiltless before Yahuwah and before Yashrael, and this land shall be your possession before Yahuwah. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against Yahuwah, and be sure your sin will find you out. Build you cities for your little ones, and folds for your sheep, and do that which has proceeded out of your mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuven spoke unto Moshe, saying, Your servants will do as my Lord commands. Our little ones, our women, our flocks, and our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilad. But your servants will pass over, every man armed for war, before Yahuwah to battle, as my Lord says. So concerning them, Moshe commanded Eleazar the priest, and Yahusha the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Yashrael. And Moshe said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuven will pass with you over of the Yardan, every man armed to battle before Yahuwah, and the land shall be subdued before you, then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuven answered, saying, As Yahuwah has said unto your servants, so will we do. We will pass over armed before Yahuwah into the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side of the Yardan may be ours. And Moshe gave unto them, even to the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, and unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Emorim, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land, with the cities thereof in the coasts, even the cities of the country round about. And the children of Gad built Daivon, and Ataroth, and Aroer, and Atroth, Shofan, and Yaazer, Yogbeha, and Beit Nimra, and Beit Haran, fenced cities, and folds for sheep. And the children of Reuven built Cheshbon, and Elae, and Kiriathaim, and Nevu, and Baal Meon, their names being changed, and Sevam, and gave other names unto the cities which they built. And the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead, and took it, and dispossessed the Emori which was in it. And Moshe gave Gilead unto Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Yair, the son of Manasseh, 
went and took the small towns thereof, and called them Chavoth Yair. And Novach went and took Kenath, and the villages thereof, and called it Novach after his own name. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 33. These are the journeys of the children of Yashrael, which went forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, with their armies under the hand of Moshe and Aharon. And Moshe wrote their goings out according to the journeys by the commandment of Yahuwah, and these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morrow, after the Pesach, the children of Yashrael went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Mitzrim. For the Mitzrim buried all their firstborn, which Yahuwah had smitten among them. Upon their Elohim also Yahuwah executed judgments. And the children of Yashrael removed from Ramses and pitched in Sukkoth. And they departed from Sukkoth and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham, and they turned again unto Pai Ha Chairoth, which is before Baal Tsephon. And they pitched before Migdol, and they departed from before Pai Ha Chairoth, and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and went three days' journey into the wilderness of Etham, and pitched in Mara. And they removed from Mara, and came unto Elim, and in Elim were twelve fountains of water and threescore and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elim and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. And they took their journey out of the wilderness of Sin and encamped in Dovka. And they departed from Dovka and encamped in Alush. And they removed from Alush and encamped in Refidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Rephidim, and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And they removed from the desert of Sinai, and pitched at Kivrot Hat Ta'ava. And they departed from Kivrot Hat Ta'ava, and they encamped at Chatzeroth. And they departed from Chatzeroth, and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma, and pitched at Rimon Peretz. And they departed from Rimon Peretz, and pitched in Livna. And they removed from Livna and pitched in Rika. And they journeyed from Rika and pitched in Kehelatha. And they went from Kehelatha and pitched in Mount Shefer. And they removed from Mount Shefer and encamped in Harada. And they removed from Harada and pitched in Machheloth. And they removed from Machheloth and encamped at Tachath. And they departed from Tachath and pitched at Terach. And they removed from Terach and pitched in Mithka. And they went from Mithka and pitched in Chashmona. And they departed from Chashmona and encamped at Moseroth. And they departed from Moseroth and pitched in Bene Yakan. And they removed from Bene Yakan and encamped at Hor Hag Gidgad. And they went from Hor Hag Gidgad and pitched in Yotvatha. And they removed from Yotvatha and encamped at Ebrona. And they departed from Ebrona and encamped at Etzon Gever. And they removed from Etzon Gever and pitched in the wilderness of Sin, which is Kadesh. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched in Mount Hor, in the edge of the land of Edom. And Aharon the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of Yahuwah and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Yashrael were come out of the land of Mitzrayim in the first day of the fifth month. And Aharon was a hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Arad the Kenani, which dwelt in the Negev in the land of Canaan, heard the coming of the children of Yashrael. And they departed from Mount Hor, and pitched in Salmona. And they departed from Salmona, and pitched in Punon. And they departed from Punon, and pitched in Ovoth. And they departed from Ovoth, and pitched in Iye Ha Avarim, in the border of Moab. And they departed from Iim, and pitched in Daivon. 
and they removed from Daibon and encamped in Almon Divla Taima. And they removed from Almon Divla Taima and pitched in the mountains of Avarim before Nevu. And they departed from the mountains of Avarim and pitched in the plains of Moab by the Yardan near Jericho. And they pitched by the Yardan from Beit Ha Yeshimoth even unto Avel Hash Shitim in the plains of Moab. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe in the plains of Moab by the Yardan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over the Yardan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falls, according to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eye, and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 34 And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan, with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Tzin, along the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast of the Salt Sea, eastward, and your border shall turn from the Negev to the ascent of Ma'ala Akrabim, and pass on to Sin. And the going forth thereof shall be from the Negev to Kedesh Barnea, and shall go on to Chatzar Adar, and pass on to Atzmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Atzmon unto the river of Mitraim, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border, and this shall be your north border. From the great sea ye shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the going forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Ziphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Chatzar Enan. This shall be your north border, and ye shall point out your east border from Chatzar Enan to Shephan, and the coast shall go down from Shephan to Rivla on the east side of Ayin, and the border shall descend and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Kinneroth eastward. And the border shall go down to the Yardan, and the goings out of it shall be at the Salt Sea, this shall be your land, with the coasts thereof round about. And Moshe commanded the children of Yashrael, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot, which Yahuwah commanded to give unto the nine tribes and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuven, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance. And half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on this side of the Yardan, near Jericho, eastward, toward the sunrising. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest, and Yahusha the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. The names of the men are these, of the tribe of Yehuda, Caleb, the son of Yefunah, and of the tribe of the children of Shimon, 
Shemuel, the son of Amihud, of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad, the son of Kiklon, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Bukiai, the son of Yoglai, prince of the children of Yosef, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Chaniel, the son of Ephod, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Temuel, the son of Shiphtan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elitzaphan, the son of Parnach, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Yissachar, Paltiel, the son of Azan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Achihud, the son of Shelomiai, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Nephtali, Pedahel, the son of Amihud. These are they whom Yahweh commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Yashrael in the land of Canaan. Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 35. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe in the plains of Moab, by the Yardan, near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Yasharel, that they give unto the Leviim of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Leviim suburbs for the cities round about them, and the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts, and the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Leviim shall reach from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits, and on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits. And the city shall be in the midst, and this shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Leviim, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither. And to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Leviim shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Yashirel. From them that have many ye shall give many. But from them that have few, ye shall give few. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Leviim, according to his inheritance, which he inherits. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, and say unto them, When ye are come over the Yardan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint your cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which kills any person at unawares, and they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not, until he stand before the assembly in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side of the Yardan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Yasharel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that every one that kills any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer, that murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meets him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred, or hurl at him by laying of weight, that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand, that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meets him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he die, and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, then the assembly shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the assembly shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the assembly shall restore him to the city of his refuge, 
whither he has fled. And he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was appointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he has fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the border of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoso kills any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall make no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land, until the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. For blood it defiles the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for I, Yahuwah, dwell among the children of Yasharel. Bemidbar, Numbers, Chapter 36 And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Yosef, came near, and spoke before Moshe, and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Yashrael. And they said, Yahuwah commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Yashrael. And my Lord was commanded by Yahuwah to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Yasharel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance." And when the jubilee of the children of Yasharel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put into the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moshe commanded the children of Yasharel according to the word of Yahuwah, saying, The tribe of the sons of Yosef has said well. This is the thing which Yahuwah commands concerning the daughters of Tzelophachad, saying, let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Yashrael remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Yashrael shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Yashrael shall be a woman unto one of the family of the tribe of her father that the children of Yashrael may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another, but every one of the tribes of the children of Yashrael shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did the daughters of Tzalofachad. For Malcha, Tirza, and Chogla, and Milka, and Noah, the daughters of Tzalofachad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Yosef. And their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which Yahuwah commanded by the hand of Moshe unto the children of Yashrael in the plains of Moab by the Yardan near Jericho. <laughs>